States, especially states equipped with the apparatus of modern power, are very potent. They have the capacity to dominate their citizens and, if they are powerful enough, strangers as well, in ways that run far beyond any reasonable conception of their legitimate authority. And those who exercise state power face many temptations to abuse this capacity in precisely these ways. In a multinational world, where the collective commitment to respect for the legitimate sovereignty of nations makes it possible for each country to escape to some degree from the domination of others, a critic of the government in country A, in country B, has the real prospect of being able to escape A's retribution, even if what he's saying is something that would be sanctioned on the territory of A. <clears throat> Once more here, history can be our guide. Many left-wing critics of the American government in the 1950s, in the age of McCarthy, were subjected to harassment. One of my intellectual heroes, W.B. Du Bois, was uh, prosecuted, unsuccessfully in the end, for being an unregistered foreign agent. A source of solace during this difficult time in his life was the support of men and women, some ordinary, some like Albert Einstein rather less so, not just in the United States, but elsewhere. In his account of his trial, Du Bois quoted letters of greeting from China and Russia, Israel and New Zealand, Germany and French North Africa. This sense that the world was watching had a major impact on the development of US policies on civil rights and racial justice, in part because American racism was so damaging to the country's reputation in the ideological struggle with the Soviet Union and the communist world. In short, people outside our state engaged with making sure it respects our rights can increase the likelihood that we will escape abuse by our own government. So we each have a reason to support a system that achieves this effect. <clears throat>